Therapy Chat Podcast, Episode 61. This is the Therapy Chat Podcast. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. And now, here's Laura Reagan, LCSWC, with today's episode. Hi, welcome back to Therapy Chat. I'm your host, Laura Reagan, LCSWC, and today's episode is a special holiday edition. Today is Wednesday, November 23rd, and tomorrow is Thanksgiving 2016. I work with people who have pain from their family of origin, and so for my clients, so many of them really struggle with the holidays. There's kind of this thing where we believe that the holidays are supposed to be a wonderful, beautiful, joyous time with family togetherness and love, peace, and harmony, good food, enjoying one another's company, being filled with gratitude. And that's a beautiful picture, and it's great if it can be that way. But when you grew up with a family where... Uh, you felt you were not enough, you did not feel worthy, your voice was not welcome, people didn't want to hear what you had to say, maybe there was anger if you expressed an opposing view from someone else's opinion, and maybe you felt disempowered, overlooked, there was favoritism, Any dysfunctional dynamics in your family of origin can mean that when you think about the holidays, you may want it to be a certain way, but when you go back and visit with family, those old patterns come out, and it's always a disappointment that this is not what I had in mind. I had these visions and dreams that it was going to be different this time, and it's the same as always. And my trauma is triggered. So whether you have a traumatic story from your childhood or from any point in your life, or whether you have pain related to maybe losing a loved one, someone who's not there for the holidays, maybe it really was beautiful all those wonderful loving things that I mentioned before, but now someone's missing and you feel like it will never be like that again. Maybe you're separated from your partner or spouse because they're deployed. Maybe your child is serving with the military or a first responder working in the emergency room all night or on an ambulance helping people and they can't be home with you, and you're missing them, and you're wishing that your Thanksgiving could could be more complete to have them there. Maybe the 2016 election has brought up some feelings for you, as it has for so many of my clients. Maybe you have some stress about talking with family members, not being sure if it's safe to discuss politics or your feelings about the election, whether you are happy with the outcome of the election or not, you may be worried that some in your family or or extended group of friends who might be at Thanksgiving won't be open to hearing how you feel and you'll feel that part of you is being stifled. That's a very real experience for many people. So I asked a group of therapists to contribute their best self-care tips for getting through the holidays when they're hard for any reason. And I thought there was a great variety of different tips that they offered. In the show notes for this episode, you'll find links to each person's website if you want to get to know more of them and what they're doing. But I'll let you know who is in this episode now, and you'll hear their contributions in a minute. 
We have Elizabeth Cush, LGPC, Progression Counseling in Annapolis, Maryland. Robert Cox, PLPC of Life Recovery Consulting in Missouri. Charlotte Heiler Easley, LCSW, who is in Lexington, Kentucky. Daniela Paoloni, LMFT of Westlake Village Counseling in California. Elizabeth Burke, LCSW of Empowered Therapy, Inc. in Chicago. Gina Della Pena, LMHC of Garden City, New York. Jackie Flynn, who is a registered play therapist and LMHC in Brevard County, Florida. Melvin Varghese, Ph.D. in Philadelphia. Ellis Edmonds, PsyD of Oakland, California. Rebecca Wong, LCSW of Connectfulness in New Paltz, New York. And Michelle Lewis, LCSW of Salt Lake Weight Counseling in Salt Lake City, Utah. Each of these professionals had a great tip to share, and I think that you're going to find them helpful. I'd love to hear from you and hear which tip you found to be the most helpful, or if you want to get in touch and tell me what helps you get through the holidays, I may feature your comment in an episode in December, because I'll be doing this again as the December holidays roll around, and um, I'd love to I would love to add your contribution. If you want to do that, just go to therapychatpodcast.com. You'll see a little box that says, uh, leave me a message through SpeakPipe. There's a green arrow. You can record your message there. And just let me know on your message that it's okay to include this in the podcast. And I don't know how many responses I'll get, but, um, you know, I would love to include you if it fits with the episode. So... Thanks so much for listening to Therapy Chat, and let's go ahead and get started listening to therapists sharing their favorite self-care tips for this Thanksgiving holiday. Our first tip for using self-care to manage holiday stress comes from Elizabeth Cush, LGPC. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Cush, and I am the owner of Progression Counseling in Annapolis, Maryland. My tip for surviving the holidays is to try to let go of perfectionism. I know for me personally, um, I host Thanksgiving with um, extended family. And for years, I wanted things to be perfect. I wanted that Pinterest table setting, and I wanted my food to be perfect. And when it wasn't, I was stressed and anxious, and it made for an unpleasant holiday. And I was missing the most important part of the holiday, was being with my family and enjoying the moments as they presented themselves. And so my tip is let go of that perfectionism. Be in the moment. Be mindful and grateful of what you do have, that you're there together as a family. If everyone doesn't get along, that's just family, right? And so I am personally working towards letting go of perfectionism, allowing the holiday to be as it is, and to be grateful for those that I'm with, sharing that day, being together. So that's my tip for you. Try to let it go. Try to go with the flow. Be in the moment. Have a happy, happy holiday. Enjoy. I agree that perfectionism can really steal your joy on Thanksgiving or any holiday or any time when you're worried about making things perfect. You're not in the moment. Our next tip comes from Robert Cox, PLPC. Hello, this is Robert Cox with Life Recovery Consulting and the Mindful Recovery Podcast. I was asked by Laura to give one recommendation for the holidays and getting through because often we're confronted with unrealistic Hallmark movie expectations of what families should be at the holidays. And I tell individuals that I work with 
that, you know, we have two families in life, the ones that we're born into and the ones that we choose. And those two families may or may not have the same components in them. But either way, the holidays can be very challenging. And generally, they are challenging because we have expectations. And so while I preach mindfulness on a regular basis, one thing that I ask clients over the holidays to embrace mindfully is that they let go of expectations. They go into the holidays not setting our expectations unrealistically, not expecting it to be a perfect turkey or a perfect Christmas, or that this one year our Uncle Fred won't get drunk and show up. You know, that if we go into the situation, we go into it with a realistic expectation or none at all, and that we create the mindful space that we need to be able to proceed and accept the holidays for whatever they are. Thinking ahead that we're going to accept those things that we really enjoy and do our best to navigate around those difficult parts. And the difficult parts become much easier if we're not setting unrealistic expectations for ourselves or for others. So we want to throw out the Hallmark cards and those images of the holidays. And we want to just accept them for what they can be and what they are, not for what we are told or we feel that they should be. And if I had to give one piece of advice, I think that would be it, is go into the holidays without expectations, open and accepting of what comes to us, and finding joy where it is to be found. And then we really will always have happy holidays. I so agree with Robert. It's our expectations about the experiences that can make them disappointing. And I think it's important to add that we don't always know what our expectations are. We just, it's all subconscious. We're just expecting it, but we're not examining what we're expecting. And that can be a a good starting point. What are my expectations about this? Are they realistic? How about if I just go with what is? Now let's hear from Charlotte Heiler Easley with her tip. Hi, this is Charlotte Easley, LCSW and equine specialist in mental health and learning. I primarily work with women and I know that expectations, both the real ones and the self-imposed ones, can make or break our enjoyment of the holidays. One of the things that clients say is, something that can change the way they look at the activities that they do is to make a list of all those things that they are expected to participate in for the next few weeks. Read the list out loud. Notice the ones that bring you joy and just let yourself feel all that good expectation feeling. When you read one that makes your stomach hurt or your chest tight, stop and think about, is this real or self-imposed? The self-imposed ones usually come with an I should or an I ought to attached to them. If it's something that you can say no to, then do so. Just remember that no is a complete answer. No, I won't be having the Christmas open house this year. No, I won't be able to do six dozen cookies for the tree lighting ceremony. Notice that after you say no, you're probably going to feel some guilt. Call it what it is, recognize it, feel it, then let it go. If the activity is something that you must navigate, even though you're dreading it, then the key word is intentional. There's two things to be intentional about. The first is, find three things that are good about the activity. This changes the way that you think. You're always, we are always looking and saying, and oh, I can't believe I have to do this. This is so bad, and I don't want to go. And we really set ourselves up for failure. But if we look for the good things about what it is that we must do, It can change the way that we show up. Say, for instance, office party. 
what are three things about the office party that you're going to enjoy? One might be, there's good food and I won't have to cook dinner. Two, I get to get all dressed up and wear those shoes that I love to wear but don't get to wear very often. Or three, once it's over and I leave, it's done for the next year. The second thing to be intentional about is to make a plan for the activities that you dread so that you can intentionally enter into them and enjoy them a little bit more. The office party, for instance. Make a plan to arrive early and leave early. Make a plan to sort of watch your alcohol consumption. Make a plan to say hello to certain people. Or if you get in an awkward situation, have a plan to look for someone else who obviously feels awkward and to say hi and smile. And the last part of the plan is always do something good for yourself after the activity is over. So for the office party, it might be, I'm going to drive around and look at Christmas lights on the way home. I'm going to stop for coffee and a tree. Or when I get home, I'm going to go for a short, brisk walk and look at all the neighborhood lights. So expectations, evaluate, real, self-imposed. Know that you can say no to things and yes to things that you have the power to choose. And finally, if you must do something that you're really not looking forward to, be intentional about it. Find three things you really like and make a plan. Enjoy the holidays. Wishing you joy and peace. Charlotte had some great tips for being intentional in addressing your expectations and the shoulds of the holidays. Next, we're going to hear from Daniela Paoloni. Hi, this is Daniela with Westlake Village Counseling in Westlake Village, California. And one of the things I try to remember when going through the holiday season is just to remind myself and to remind everyone else that it's really okay to have a mixed bag of emotions. I mean, perhaps there's this feeling of joy and happiness and fulfillment because the holidays bring family together. But then at the other end, you know, it can also bring feelings of dread or unease and just allowing ourselves to have those those emotions and and expressing them and being okay with it, I think is a really great way to help not feel weighed down or burdened or stressed out um, with the holidays because we're all human beings. We're all allowed to, you know, have these mixture of emotions during the holidays because that's kind of what is to be expected and just to acknowledge it, recognize it, and not uh, judge ourselves or be critical of ourselves because of how we should be feeling um, emotionally. There's no one right way to be, and the holidays are no exception to that. That is so true. Next, we're going to hear from Elizabeth Burke with some more about what we can and can't control. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Burke, LCSW, and one coping mechanism I have for you today to think about when you are interacting with your family members this holiday season is to remember that you have more control over your own happiness than sometimes it feels like you do. So take a few deep breaths, prepare yourself for the interactions that you might have, and remind yourself that no one has the power to take away your happiness. So you can manage your thoughts effectively when interacting and put up those barriers, those mental boundaries so that you don't internalize all of the negative interactions or, you know, all of the potential stressors that come into play when you're interacting with your family members this holiday season. Yeah, we can't control how other people behave, but we can control the boundaries we set and hold. By holding the limits that we set, we teach people how it's okay to treat us, what's okay with us and what's not. Now, Gina Della Pena is going to talk more about setting boundaries during 
holiday gatherings. Hi, this is Gina De La Pena, LMHC, and I'd like to offer a tip to get through the holidays if you're struggling with your emotions this holiday season. The holidays are synonymous with tradition and ritual, and sometimes people get caught up in what they should do or they have to do or what they've always done. I like to encourage people to step back and think about maybe saying no or modifying something that they've always done if emotionally they need to. That might involve saying no to an invitation or maybe not traveling a distance for the holidays but staying closer to home. Maybe it's just stopping by to say hi at a gathering instead of staying there for four hours. But it's important to give yourself permission to say no or change things up over the holidays if that's something that you need to do to take care of yourself. Yes, people might not be so happy about that change. Some people might be disappointed or upset. But You've got to do what you've got to do to take care of yourself sometimes. And I hope that you can put yourself first this holiday season and figure out what you need to enjoy your holiday. Great advice. Next, we're going to hear from Jackie Flynn with some wise words about shoulds and what ifs. Hi there, I'm Jackie Flynn. I'm a licensed mental health counselor and a registered play therapist. I'm an EMDR therapist and a couples therapist trained in Gottman Method Couples Counseling at my private practice, Counseling in Brevard, in Brevard County, Florida. I'm also the host of the Parenting in the Rain podcast. The tip I'd like to offer is just to be present. When feelings of anxiety surface through those what-if statements, such as what if she says this or what if he does that, just focus on the present moment. And you can do this through mindfulness, such as mindful breathing, just really noticing your breath in every aspect of it as it goes in and out of your body. And mindful movement. Movements or mindful eating, really having that hyper focus on all of the sensory aspects of whatever you're doing, really going to that present moment can quieten those what ifs. It can also help you with the I should have thoughts, I should have done this, or I should have done that, or I can't believe this happened. Those things can really hijack your ability to stay regulated and to enjoy the moment. This beautiful break from emotional time travel can not only give you a break from the stress, but it can increase your chances of truly being able to enjoy and be present during this time through the power of just being mindful of what's going on in the very present moment, the right now. Jackie shared some great ways to take a break from shoulds and what ifs. And now Melvin Varghese is going to talk about other ways to take breaks for self-care. Hi there, this is Dr. Melvin Varghese. I'm a licensed psychologist in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where I serve entrepreneurs who want to make a big impact in the world, but they're stifled by the fear of failure and imposter syndrome. The number one tip that I have for getting through the holidays Um, is this idea that the best gift you can give yourself is taking care of you. So I'm a big fan of intentionally incorporating breaks into the holiday season. So like literally putting it on a schedule because I don't know what it's like for you, but for me, if I don't put something on a schedule, it never gets done or uh, I tend to fill it with other stuff and it doesn't become as much of a priority. So I love that thought of putting breaks into your schedule for your own self-care. So this could be something as simple as just having a moment where some quiet time to read a favorite book, or it could be having coffee with a friend. But uh, doing those things with intention uh, just makes the holiday season much more manageable because the reality is 
as uh, wonderful as holidays are, they can be so uh, emotionally draining and they can bring up a lot of things for all of us. Um, Hope that helps. And Laura, thank you for putting this together. I like that example of being intentional with how we are going to practice self-care during this holiday time. Now Ellis Edmonds is going to tell us about how to increase the feeling of being supported during the holidays. Hello, this is Ellis Edmonds. I'm a licensed psychologist. And my advice for the holidays, for dealing with difficult times in the holidays, especially if you're feeling um, lonely or without support, is to make a list of all the people in your life, either past or present, that have really supported you, that have really loved you, cared for you, um, that have been unconditionally loving towards you in your life. And to see if you can make a list of all those people um, and pick a few of them, or maybe just one person that really stands out to you. And see if you can take their perspective and look at yourself from the perspective of this person that really loves you, that really cares for you. And if you're having a difficult moment, um, thinking about what this person might say to you in that difficult moment, um, how would they take care of you, or what advice might they offer you from this perspective of this unconditionally loving person. And when you have this um, list of all these people that you found to be really supportive and caring in your life, Uh, The other thing you can do is to reach out to these people and to give them a phone call, send them an email, see how they're doing in their life, and connect with them. So that's my advice for getting through difficult times in the holidays. That's a really great tip. Next, Rebecca Wong is going to talk to us about turning inward Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I'm a relationship therapist over at connectfulness.com. And I wanted to take a moment to invite you to notice where you're feeling the most disconnected this holiday season. Is it when you get together with your family? Is it in the midst of some kind of family conflict? We all have them. Um, In those moments, what happens if you slow down? If you listen to the message of the disconnection? Can you learn through that very disconnection how to come back together, how to open your heart to one another, how to see each other? Because underneath it all, we all want the same thing. Every single one of us, we all want to belong. And what's happening when we feel disconnected is that we're feeling rejected. And if you're feeling that disconnect, chances are that the people that you love, the people that you want to be with, the people whom you want to belong with, they may be feeling it too. So what can you do? How can you slow down? Can you go take a walk? I'm, I'm taking a walk right now. You might even hear the wind around me. Can you go take a walk? Can you go give yourself just some quiet space? Just take a pause. What's one thing that you can do? Just one thing. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Maybe, maybe you serve the next meal and you go get the plates ready. One thing that helps you slow down and ultimately helps you just recenter yourself and reopen your heart to the possibility that that disconnect, that thing that doesn't feel good, might actually be where the medicine is. It might actually be the information you need to find your way back into connection. Happy holidays. Wow. That one was deep. It's definitely something to think about. Now, last but not least, Michelle Lewis is going to give us a very useful tip that really is particularly poignant at Thanksgiving. Hi, Laura. This is Michelle Lewis, LCSW from Salt Lake Weight Counseling. I wanted to offer my one tip for the holidays, and that is don't eat your feelings. Whatever you do, don't eat your feelings. If hunger is not the problem, food will never be the solution. And often 
we eat when there are words that we want to say. So honor your truth and be authentic and and speak about what you're feeling instead of using food to numb yourself. Happy holidays, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Wow. I just have to say, I am really overcome with gratitude at listening to these wonderful tips from such amazing therapists. And I'm so grateful that all of them contributed. Thank you all. And thank you who are listening. I hope you found this helpful. And I really am extremely grateful for you, the listeners of Therapy Chat. Thank you for tuning in and for giving feedback and sharing the podcast with your friends. It really means a lot to me. This is a beautiful experience to host Therapy Chat, and I literally could not do it without you. I mean, I could because I would just be talking and no one would be listening, but it's really gratifying to know that people listen and find it useful. So thank you, and I hope you have a beautiful Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you for listening to this episode of Therapy Chat. I hope you found at least one tip that you can use for getting through the holiday season, particularly Thanksgiving tomorrow. But, you know, it's not like um, any feelings that come up about Thanksgiving or the holidays just go away so fast as soon as Thanksgiving meal is finished. Um, It kind of lingers. And oftentimes people start feeling kind of down in the beginning of November, and it kind of lasts through February. So I see that quite commonly. And if that's something that you've struggled with, and you're in the Baltimore area, I would love to talk with you about how therapy can help. You can visit my website, www.lauraregan.lcswc.com, or give me a call at 443-510-1048. Hey, this is Laura Reagan, LCSWC host of Therapy Chat. Listen, if you're a therapist who resonates with the idea of wanting to bring your best self into your work with clients, I wanted to tell you about a few ways that you can get support in showing up fully with your clients while having awareness of your own wounded places. We can't do our best work with clients if we're not self-aware. So I offer clinical supervision to Maryland social workers, whether students or newly licensed LGSWs who are working on clinical hours for independent licensure, or LCSWCs who want to get more specialized supervision in trauma work. So in my clinical consultation for any therapists, um, including counselors, MFTs, psychologists, or social workers, I help people work on showing up as your best self in your therapy sessions while taking care of your own wounded parts so you can effectively support your clients. I also specialize in helping you address the effects of traumatic stress exposure through vicarious trauma, secondary traumatic stress, compassion fatigue, burnout, whatever you want to call it. That is something that I've focused on quite a bit, and you can find more information on that by going to my website and clicking on For Professionals. We can do clinical consultation in person, or if you're outside of Maryland, we can do it online using a secure online platform. And if you're a trauma therapist seeking support for the effects of traumatic stress exposure and vicarious trauma, and you want support in community, sign up for information on joining the next cohort of my trauma therapist community. That includes monthly group clinical consultation in person or online, and a private Facebook group for keeping in touch in between sessions for less than the cost of individual clinical consultation with me. So 
I hope you'll be inspired to check out some of these resources. If nothing else, you can find a lot of information on that for professionals page about self-care for therapists and addressing, identifying, and preventing the effects of trauma exposure on us as therapists. So you can check that out at www.lauraregan.lcswc.com and then click on for professionals. Thanks so much. Once again, thanks so much for listening to Therapy Chat. Please consider visiting iTunes to leave a rating and review and subscribe so you can receive all the latest episodes as soon as they come out. When you do this, if you use your smartphone to listen to Therapy Chat, you'll have a new episode on your podcast app every time one is released. So whether I do a bonus episode or the episodes that are typically released once per week, it will be there as soon as it comes out. You don't have to go looking for the latest one. And I would love to have you subscribe. Thanks so much. And I hope you have a beautiful holiday season that is everything you want it to be. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Therapy Chat Podcast with Laura Reagan, LCSWC. For more information, visit Laura's website at www.lauraregan.com. LCSWC.com.